Passo de uma labento macera. Passo de uma gavila na para. Passo de uma bisoro para lá de. Passo de uma bisoro para My name is Leslie Natsky, and I am one of the founders and the executive director currently of Expanding Lives. So Expanding Lives is an organization um, that works with young women from West Africa who are the first generation in the first generation of girls to go to high school. And the idea is that we will make, um, help them to become leaders uh, in their own community. So what we do is we identify girls who have already proven themselves by succeeding in high school and also uh, by overcoming you know, very challenging odds uh, in their own country and we bring them to Chicago for six weeks to attend a conference, a workshop, to help them to become, to become leaders when they come home. My name is Vigo Sugozi. My name is Arkosi. My name is My name is Irene Pia. My name is uh, Emma Isabella Tuli. I'm from Benin. And uh, I I the director of so there's a group of us who worked in Niger, specifically in Niger, West Africa, and um, we noticed that there were a lot of girls who were not attending junior high school. So for example, I taught at a junior high when I was there, and that's a four-year school, and the first year that I taught there, the 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 girls who were coming in seventh grade, there were about six girls for every 45 boys. And four years later, there were only three of those girls left. And when you get to the high school level, there were only two, one or two girls. And at the university level, I had no students whatsoever. So we know that girls are, are certainly as intelligent as boys are. We knew there was some sort of a problem. So when we looked into it, we looked at what other organizations were doing to try to combat the fact that there were not a lot of girls that were attending school. Um, the reasons are oftentimes financial. Um, sometimes they're cultural, that um, some people don't believe that girls are as smart as boys are. Oftentimes they have to work very hard, and if there's not enough money to send two children to school, they'll choose to send the boy to school as opposed to the girl. Um, so we looked at what a lot of other organizations were doing in order to combat this, and we found that there were a lot of organizations that were helping with primary school education, trying to keep girls into pri in primary, and there were a lot of organizations that helped girls when they were at the secondary level if they dropped out or didn't attend school. But there weren't really a lot of people working to keep the girls in secondary and to help the girls that had already proven themselves to take those leadership skills and really expand upon them. And so that's where we stepped in and decided, okay, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to work on. Um, there was there were a group of us here. Some of them, some people were educators. Some people had had experience in Niger. Um, one Nigerian. Uh, we got together and discussed what I think was a seed of an idea, and sort of talked about what it would look like and then in 2008 we we got 501c3 status and we just decided okay let's just do it and see what happens and we I think we've come a long way since then we've we've uh, developed the program quite a bit um, from our initial ideas so the initial idea was for the girls to come here to Chicago and take advantage of all the different kinds of classes and things that that take place in Chicago and since then we've sort of built our own curriculum um, in the beginning, we also 
thought that the goal, the, the beginning goal was to help the girls to stay in school so they could finish and go to university. Only 2% of girls go to university in Niger. And um, we wanted to bump up that number. Um, what's happened since then is the girls have outshone us, our ideas. They, they have proven that they can be leading things when they're in high school. Um, and they do amazing things when they go back. Uh, we have girls right now putting on, this very week, they're putting on a program for 26 younger girls, teaching them about menstruation, something that's traditionally not taught, um, about mediation, solving problems by talking with people, uh, leadership skills, doing English, things that will help them with uh, getting into high school and furthering their education, but also becoming active members in the community. So two years ago, there's a core group of us that went to Benin, and again, we brought the Nigerian girls down to Benin and met up with other girls there and had a pretty rich and uh, positive experience in Benin and found the partner from a development, Women in Development, and we felt like we could work with them, uh, possibly even to help us to connect with other non-for-profits in Benin. Um, so this year we worked only with them and we took girls only that were, that were only connected with their program. They came this year then from Benin, it's the first time we've had girls come from Benin. So that was much, it was, in the beginning especially it seemed like it was, it was very, very different for us, or for, at least for me it seemed like it was very different. Culturally I feel like I know Niger well enough to um, predict how the girls were going to act and the girls from Benin being a little bit more urban. Um, uh, was a, it was a little bit of a different different kind of feel to the program, um, but still overall very positive. I mean, we we've never had girls from Niger come and uh, just take over the dance program, and this year the girls from Benin completely they owned that. That was that that was completely theirs. Uh, they came with a lot of different kinds of ideas, um, and I'm really excited to see how they're going to share those things with uh, girls from Niger in the future. I think that's going to be really cool. We have fundraisers and we have a, a contributing board, which is great. We have a junior board that runs a number of fundraisers, a union from a local high school to a local high school that has a charity drive, and we are one of the recipients for that, uh, a 5K, and everything else is just donations from people, just small, a lot of $50, $100, $200, $500 donations that come in from people who either meet the girls or no people who are involved in the program. It's all volunteers, so nobody's paid. We have a lot of high school students that help. We have a lot of university students that help. And we have a core of professionals who in the summer are willing to give, you know, five hours a week or ten hours a week to the organization to teach, and that's great. And the host families also are not paid. They, they do it because they I think they do it because they think it's going to be a cultural experience for their families and because they know they're giving back and then they know they're making a really strong impact for um, a family or two families back in West Africa. And expanding lives pays for everything for the girls. We pay for their identification, the pictures they need for that identification cards, for their passports, their visas, their travel to get all these things done, uh, their airfare. Uh, all the classes they take here, the school supplies they get when they're here, the health insurance, they, they see a pro bono dentist while they're here, and then when they go home, we support them with, edu we give them educational support, and if there's medical issues, we also try to take care of those things because we don't want to think, though, we know that those are the kinds of things that will hinder their education. What We try to um, have an equal number of new Americans on the scene, and most of them are young, like at a high school age, that are the girls from the girls who are coming from West Africa, their peers. 
the same age group, same education level. And I think it's challenging sometimes for them to, to be able to communicate and to cross some of the, some of the, you know, the, the cultural, I don't want to say barriers because it doesn't necessarily stop them. In fact, I don't think there's a single year that's gone by where somebody, some American and some West African has not said to me, you think they're going to be so different and they end up being the same. We think the same things are funny, we think the same things are interesting, we think the same things are um, amusing, uh, we think the same things are beautiful. Uh, so that stuff, it, it, yeah, it definitely, it definitely happens every single year it happens and every single year there are people who are able to cross that barrier. And that's just this awesome, I mean, it's just, it's awesome to see and it's often awesome every single year to hear somebody from both sides come and say that. In fact, that's something that we didn't have in 2008. We didn't really, I, I didn't really think that it was the most important thing. And now when I see what it does for people, when I see how it transforms the way that people think, especially young people, I know that it's really one of the most important components of our program. But I think at this point now, they know that I don't speak perfect French and I know they don't speak perfect English, so we kind of are able to just figure it out and like we never have a conversation so it's just in one language, it's always kind of like a mix of things. Um, so I think that was, that's cool, but I think that's something that we've kind of worked out throughout the six weeks. I would like to continue to grow things on the Niger and the Nin side. Um, a strong group of young women who are there. We have uh, we have girls now who are employed, um, who are married, starting to have children, who are settled. We would like to continue to grow things on that side so that that, that impact. I mean, the idea of expanding lives comes from ex one person having a life that is expanded and full. That name has come to mean that they lead other people to have expanded lives as well. And our girls, like I, as I said, the girls are definitely proving that there.